Hello everybody and welcome to my next Moto tutorial and in this tutorial we're not going to be modeling anything specific we're going to be just going over some hard surface modeling techniques or inorganic modeling techniques um, we're not going to model like I said anything specific we're just going to go in and learn how to model certain techniques certain flows certain creases and just how to do just certain things with inorganic shapes okay and as you can see I just have a little plane laid down here no problem I'm sure you all can get that far so let's go to our top view and what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a template to cut a circle out of this now we of course you use a cylinder to create a circle but just make sure it has eight sides as long as it has eight sides when you subdivide it it will be a circle anything less than eight won't be okay so let's go ahead and click our cylinder actually let's go ahead and get a new mesh so come over here to your tree and say new item new mesh now I'm working in Untitled 2. This is another project up top here that I was working on, so don't look at this and let it get you confused, okay? This is what we're working on now. So now you can see my wireframe here is uh, to the square, but you can't hardly see it. So let's go up to Moto Preferences, and then we'll get and scroll down to Color, okay? And then there'll be this little box here that says Background Item. Select that. I'm going to make it white so we can see it real good in the background. I'm going to say Save to Scheme. I have my custom color set up there. Now you can go to view, view color scheme, and I'm going to select my new, and there it is. Now we have a white wireframe in the background. So remember, we're on our blank mesh, and our square is in the background, okay? So let's go ahead and click on our cylinder. Make sure it's eight sides, one segment. We'll click right in the middle of our cube here. Then I'll hold the control key and click and drag. And this will drag out an eight-sided cylinder like that okay and that's all we need to do okay so let's go ahead and hit the spacebar to drop our tool and let's go ahead and rename this template so we won't get confused and let's rename our original mesh let's just call it model okay so now we have our eight-sided cylinder template let's go to our perspective view so you can see what we got here they're laying right on top of one another as you can see go back to top so I'm gonna select my square okay and with the template on top okay so I'll select my square then I'm gonna go ahead and hit the C key which will bring up my edge slice tool and I'm gonna start right here in the corner and I'm gonna come down and I'm gonna use this as a template and I'm gonna trace this white line so I'm gonna come here and click I'm going to come right here, click, and I'm going to trace this around, and I'm just using this as a template. That's all we're going to be using it for. We can actually delete this template when we get done making our shape. And I'm going to cut, cut around to here like this, just trying to match up as best I can. It don't have to be super accurate. Right there. And I'm going to hit my space bar to drop our tool. Now let's go ahead and turn the eyeball off from our template so it disappears and now you can see the shape we've got cut. Let's go ahead and recall our tool by hitting the C key again. Let's click here. Let's join these up like this. Then I'm going to hold the shift key and click up here to restart a new one and I'm going to go ahead and terminate all these edges. And I'm holding the shift key every time I click. Okay, so now let's do our corners. Shift, click. We'll start a new one. Shift, click. And we'll take it down to this corner. And there we go. Now we have our template cut. We can even go in actually and we can select this and we can delete it because we don't need it anymore. So we'll just come down, right click, and say delete. Now we just have this template. So let's go to our polygon mode. We'll select that middle polygon and we'll delete that sucker and look what we're left with. Okay? So if we sub D it, we get a perfect circle in the middle. So now all we need to do is sure up our edges. Okay? So let's go in here. Let's select these two polygons, loop. Hit the B key for bevel. Let's make sure group polygons are selected and let's bevel in a little bit. And as you'll see now, we have this little edge around the inner and outer. So let's hit our C key and bring back up our edge slice and let's roughly. Just cut from here to here, like so. It don't have to be straight. Cut from here to here, like so. 
Okay, and we're going to do that on all four corners. So let's go over to this corner. Shift click. We'll get us one here. Shift click. And we'll put one here. Now let's do it here. Shift click. Shift click. Now you don't have to do it this way. It may not even be the correct way. Okay? But it's just the way that I'm doing it here. <clears throat> Now we got those cut. Let's go to our edge mode and let's select that one. We'll shift select that one. Shift select that one. And this one. So now we got all four of them selected, as you can see. And I'm going to hit delete. Oops. Had too many selected. Got one right here I need to deselect. We'll hit delete and that'll get rid of those four little lines like so and now when I hit the tab key you can see boom we're holding our edges okay and a lot of people don't like these you know extraordinary vertices and you can do things to fix that with your geometry that's not a problem I plan on getting into geometry flow and all that in greater video in, in, in future videos this is just simple inorganic modeling techniques right here this is just the first video that I'm showing you guys so don't be too um, worried about you know geometry flow right now and things like these you know extraordinary vertices and stuff okay which is, these are not necessarily a bad thing but they can be okay so let's go back into polygon mode and now we have this cool little shape we can go now back to perspective you can see what we got we can turn off our wireframe okay now let's go to our edge mode and let's double click our inside edge like so. And that highlights that inside edge. I'm going to hit the Z key to bring up my edge extend. I'm going to pull it down just a tad. Shift click, pull it down, shift click, then pull it down just a tad again. Spacebar drop my tool. Then I'm going to hit the P key to fill that in because my edges are still selected. Bam. Now we have this cool little thing. This little cool little shape, okay? So if we subdivide this, you can see what we get. So we need to go ahead and terminate these edges, which is no problem. We'll select that middle polygon, go to our polygon tab, select spiky, boom. There we go. Now we have that, but we don't want triangles. So we'll take our edges, we'll select this edge, this edge, this edge, this edge, delete them. That leaves us with polygon, or four quads now. So let's turn off our wireframe. You see we have us a nice clean shape there cut in. Okay. So let's take it one step further. And let's go back to sub D mode. Let's go ahead and polygon mode. Let's select it. Let's go to duplicate. We'll say clone. We'll clone it five times. And I'll click and I'm gonna bring this over like this. Let's zoom in a little bit here so I can see how close we are. Okay, there's that. All right. Now let's go ahead and select them all again. We'll say clone one more time. And this time we're going to drag down. All right. So now, if I go into sub-D mode, you can see we're not joined up here at all. These things are not joined. So what I'm going to do is go to my vert mode. I'm going to select all my verts. Let me go in here and look, see what we got. Yeah, that looks pretty good. We'll select all my verts there. We'll go to vertex. I'm going to say merge. I'm going to say it should be on automatic. I'm going to make it fixed. And we're going to start let's start low. We'll start with 3 millimeters. I don't think this is going to do it. I'll say OK. And it tells me how many verts are joined. 150. Let's go in and see. And hey, that did take care of it. 3 millimeter 
No, it didn't. There's still a few that needs to join there. Okay. Not a problem. So we'll go in there, divert, and we'll select these. We'll call up our merge tool. And this time, let's say 6 millimeters. We'll say OK. We'll say 125 verts merge that time. Sub D mode. And now you can see we're all merged up. Everything is connected. Everything looks good. We can turn off our wireframe. Let's go into our shader tree. Turn down our render tab. Select our base material. And I'm just going to turn on... Or, um, eh, well, let's see here. Let's select our base material. And let's turn on double-sided under surface normal. That way we can see the back sides here like this. And there we go. Now we have this. This could be used as a rocket launcher. You know, you could shoot a rocket out of, out of which one of these things, you know, or whatever. You could grab the edges and ex edge extend them. On down like this. Okay, now we have a nice clean piece of geometry. We have some nice circular holes cut in it. Really nice, uniform, circular holes. Everything was joined up. We made one original template, and we used the merge command to merge all of our verts. And there we go. So this has been our first little exercise in inorganic modeling. I really look forward to this series, and um, I hope you guys tune in for the next ones. Thanks for watching. Happy modeling.